New tonight, it may be hard to believe, but we are just years away from actually being able to reverse aging. That's the message tonight from researchers attending an event that is bringing thousands of people from all over the world to San Diego. Fox 5's Kristen Shanahan tells us what she found out. Many of us wonder what it would be like to go back 20 years. Well, that could become a reality sooner than we think, says those dedicated to the longevity movement. We now have the conventional people understanding the prospect of immortality is here. Bill Falloon, the co-founder of Life Extension, has spent much of his life working on improving health and age. What I project is going to happen over the next 10 to 12 year period is that the results from ongoing clinical trials, this involves people, not animals, is going to demonstrate significant age reversal. Can older people grow biologically younger via interventions that are working in the laboratory animals and they're being translated into human studies. But how? There's no one magic bullet. It means that you have to do a whole bunch of things jointly and it's the cumulative effect of fixing all the various types of damage that does the trick. Fixing damage that comes with age that researchers say can be reversed by doing things like stem cell therapy and putting youthful blood and plasma in older bodies. Not necessarily fixing all the damage, but fixing enough of it so as to roll back the clock and buy time. To learn how to live longer and better is why people from all over are attending this year's Revolution Against Aging and Death Festival. And you can learn much more about this topic here at Rad Festival that's being held at the Town and Country Resort and Convention Center. The event runs until Sunday. For those who don't know all about me, I've dedicated the last 41 consecutive years to identifying technologies aimed at enabling people to live longer in good health with no upper longevity limit. None. No limit, but what I do need are my slides to be put on that screen, and I hope they're going to do that real soon. But for the first time in my history, literally first time in my history or medical history for that matter, I'm able to cite a published study, published earlier this year, peer-reviewed published study showing that we are winning the war against biological aging. This is unprecedented. We as a group, the American population as a group, have slowed their rate of biological aging. The study looked at people starting in 1988, followed them to 2010. Men decreased their biological age by over four years, women by over three years. And what should impress everyone in this room is that the degree of age delay had a lot to do with modifiable health behaviors. And hey, that's what we're all doing here. We watch what we eat. We replace our hormones. We take the appropriate supplements. We take the appropriate medications like metformin. So I'd like to think that as this group is concerned, we've delayed aging far more substantially than this national sampling of Americans, which included unhealthy people. Now, this is a tremendous advance. These were some of the blood test parameters and blood pressure and lung capacity, some of the parameters they use to measure biological aging. And as a group, these people were slowing their rate by a substantial number. And we're talking here about 2010 was the cutoff. In the last eight years, we've come a long way. We've done a lot better than that. So what we're looking at is the first evidence in human history of a population-wide delayed effect of aging. We are winning the war against aging. Haven't won it yet, but we are winning it battle by battle. And what does that translate into? Well, a leading cause of death, 8 million people suffer congestive heart failure, and what happens is they suddenly die. They die in their sleep, they have a heart attack. But starting in 1995 and going to just 2014, just a brief period of time, technology advanced so that there's 44% fewer sudden deaths in congestive heart failure patients. This is how aging is being slowed and how degenerative illnesses are being thwarted. It's happening all the time. And I appreciate what Terry Grossman talked about relating to Alzheimer's disease, because it segues exactly into what I'm gonna talk about right now. 
Now, there is a record number of humans in the United States with Alzheimer's because there's a record number of elderly people. But the prevalence of Alzheimer's disease is plummeting. These are four independent published studies showing beginning around 1980, Alzheimer's prevalence in older people, in other words, the percent of old people who develop dementia, it has dropped substantially. And the medical community, they identify some of the factors involved in this reduction in dementia prevalence, including better education, avoiding tobacco, but most important, paying attention to your cardiovascular risk factors. What you do to reduce your risk of a heart attack, it's reducing your risk of vascular dementia, Alzheimer's disease, it's giving you a dual benefit. It's also, of course, protecting your kidneys. So, but the mainstream has overlooked major oversight on their part is that starting in the 1980s, there has been a 20-fold increase in the use of dietary supplements, huge increases in the use of bioidentical hormones. And again, for people like us, we're watching what we eat. And we are the ones, as Terry Grossman pointed out, we are the ones that are enjoying this huge reduction in our risk of dementia. So we're being rewarded. If you wonder, I eat these organic foods or I avoid these toxic ones, is it really helping? Yeah, it's keeping you from losing your mind. It is benefiting you. Now, now last year, I uh, showed a slide like this, a uh, study published in JAMA showing starting in 1980, which happens to be the first year we published our newsletter, but starting in 1980, going to 2014, there's a 50% decrease in the leading cause of degenerative illness, heart attack. And what some scientists did at the University of Washington is they made a map to show, this is a 15 second video I'm gonna play for you by the way, this map shows what a 50% progressive decrease in cardiovascular deaths looks like. And as that country turns blue, it represents fewer numbers of people succumbing to heart disease. That's a baseline, by the way. The yellow and orange areas are higher rates of cardiovascular disease. And what's happening, as you're seeing, those rates are going down. Fewer people are succumbing to heart attacks and strokes, and it's because of technology advancing and people taking better care of themselves. It's a combination. It's not just one factor. So this map, again, showing a huge decline in age-related disease, and for most people, they don't even understand this is happening. If you ask a typical person, our heart attack incidence is going down, they really won't know. They'll probably say no, but guess what? That blue, the bluer that country is, the less people are dying from cardiovascular disease. And I wanna take a little bit of credit, just a little bit, for this huge decline in both dementia and cardiovascular disease, because in the early 1980s, we at Life Extension introduced a number of interventions designed to combat congestive heart failure, to reduce the risk of a sudden heart attack, and defying conventional reference ranges as it related to blood tests. Because back in 1980, doctors were letting cholesterol, LDL, inflammatory markers go through the roof, and they considered that normal. As an aging person, it is normal to have vascular risk factors. We fought back, we kept our supporters very healthy. Now the controversial position that I'm going to be discussing today is the prospect of human age reversal, making it happen today. And why we're so excited? Well, in the animal model, they're doing it. In laboratory animals, they're doing it. And the results of some clinical trials that I'm gonna to reveal today, first time ever been revealed in public, the results of clinical studies showing what we are doing to reverse aging in people, in people. Now the media, they are picking up on this. And this is a really good piece of news. Uh, FDA has cleared the Mayo Clinic to produce billions of stem cells to experiment with. And this is great, by the way. For the future, this is great. But we need to grab the bull by the horns now. We cannot wait for FDA-approved studies to be concluded and a new drug to be developed. So when you hear about stem cells, I'm gonna tell you how to better benefit from them during this conversation. Uh, it's important that uh, you understand the government is not fighting us like they used to. And I say that in the context, this is a 2002 issue of Life Extension Magazine. We were fighting back against the federal ban against stem cell research. Very disappointing. And this is one battle we did not win. That ban took effect around 2001 and stayed in effect till about 2009. A lot of lost opportunities. So if there is ever a threat by the federal government to shut down any research project, we gotta fight back. 
We need to write our congressmen every day. Call your senators. Don't let them stop us again. Because there's a lot of people who aren't in this room because that research, unfortunately, was suppressed. AARP, April 2018. I thought I was reading something out of Life Extension magazine because they're talking about science advancing to the point where older people are going to live longer, they're going to be healthier, and it's going to open up all kinds of new opportunities that they never thought that they'd have. So we're getting mainstream recognition, and AARP historically has been very conservative. They have not advocated for age reversal therapies. As it relates to the prospect of immortality, National Geographic did a nice issue talking about people like me, talking about people who want to live forever. And that was followed up by an investigative report. And this was really one of those reports designed to torpedo what we're trying to accomplish. In other words, to find out, is this real? Is this fraudulent? I spent a long time with the uh, writer. He went up to Harvard, went up to Mayo Clinic. He went around the country interviewing these scientists. And the conclusion was that aging is going to go in reverse, but no one yet agrees that immortality is going to happen. And that's OK. When all the experts on one side say, yes, we can reverse aging, but that doesn't mean we're going to live forever, that's OK. I like being in a minority. Typically, historically, those are the people who are correct. George Church, you may have heard of this guy. He is an immortalist, I've been told. He is working with CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology. He believes within the next 10 years, he is going to be able to make aging a manageable condition, perhaps even cure it altogether. Now, he's going to do some studies real soon on 12-year-old dogs. And if their aging process goes in reverse, George Church intends to be one of the first human beings to ever test them on himself. He is a self-experimenter. We love this, by the way. And he's, he's rather well-funded. Uh, people have figured out what he's doing uh, from the standpoint of being real. And he's getting some really nice publicity. The scientific community is rising up and realizing, Dr. Church, You've got, you're doing something significant there, and that's very important. We've been reporting on Dr. Church's research in our magazine, by the way. In other words, he's able to make cells. Their aging process go in reverse. He simply needs to do it systemically. So we've got money, big money, going into aging research. This is fantastic. But I'm going to tell you why it's not good enough. Not good enough. I'm going to tell you why. We've all heard of Google's subsidiary Calico. It's a California life company founded in September 2013. Their research has yielded some major, major advances. So much so that a couple months ago, major announcement. The Calico company has partnered with Big Pharma, and Calico is putting in over $1 billion to, de to develop anti-aging drugs. Hey, this is huge. To develop anti-aging drugs, they're doing this, but they're nine years away. Nine years away for the first drug ever being approved by the FDA. We don't have that kind of time to wait. We cannot wait for the FDA to approve these drugs. Now, this slide is out of the Journal of the American Medical Association four days ago. I thought they had broken into my computer and hijacked part of my presentation. Because what you're reading here, these are the titles of these articles, have a lot to do with what I'm going to tell you about reversing aging. And they were also talking about the revolution that's occurred and the fact that the achievement of life extension needs to be recognized. Now, JAMA is overviewed by a group of conservative peer-reviewed doctors, but they can't ignore the science. Age reversal, radically extended lives, it's happening, and they are recognizing it. This is a major achievement, by the way, a major, major achievement. Even people who are not as uh, motivated as we are cannot overlook the fact that rapamycin and metformin may extend our healthy lifespans by 20 years. Bear in mind, this is in JAMA, the American Medical Association's own journal. They're recognizing aging as a condition that we need to deal with. Now, this is the stair-step approach, the sequential order of biological age reversal interventions that we're going to recommend. Eventually, if we control aging, then Ray Kurzweil will talk about us moving into the cloud and achieving true immortality. I'm going to leave that to Ray Kurzweil. That's his area of expertise. So what are we going to do now? Tourniquets, that's the best we can do. And some people may think it's rather primitive. But guess what? 
you put a tourniquet around your leg if you have a severe hemorrhage, and you get transported to the hospital alive. Not dead, but alive with a simple procedure. So the age reversal interventions we're proposing, we know are not a cure for aging itself, but they're gonna transport you to the future when technology will be able to reverse your degenerative processes and theoretically keep you alive for many, many decades longer than what anyone expected. It's just a matter of putting the pieces together. We've got the pieces, just gotta put them all together. And that's the reason that I'm here talking to you today. Now, our battle strategy is to investigate potential age reversal interventions, and then most important, we've got to validate baseline and follow-up. We cannot forget about the critical need to validate what we're doing. So what we've put together is an age management panel that includes clinical measures and surrogate biomarkers to indicate whether or not, if you go down to Panama for Dr. Weirden's therapy, we want to see where you are baseline, and we want to see where you are uh, a month later. We want to see how well it's working. And these tests, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly, but one of them deals with thrombosis. That's a leading cause of death in people over age 50. Well, if you're at high risk for a thrombotic event, and that means an ischemic stroke, coronary artery blockage, your kidney shutting down, we want you to correct that. We want you to correct that as much as you can before you undergo the experimental therapy. And I'm just going to briefly go through the different components of this age management panel. And it's only designed for people who are contemplating getting into a research project or self-experimenting and getting that baseline and then following it up. So we're going to look at a lot of markers of aging. We want your hormones as much optimized as they can be before you undergo the therapy because hormones enable our cells to talk to each other. If we can restore cell-to-cell -cell communication, we're probably going to see a much better uh, result. Uh, Insulin-like growth factors, well, these can regenerate the thymus gland. These can do a lot of good benefits, but too much can maybe cause cancer. So we want to make sure that what benefit you're getting as far as increased growth factors are not going to hurt you. These, again, I'm just going through the different panels that are included in this age management profile. The idea is, especially with the immune system, if nothing else kills us, immune senescence will. We need to identify where you are at baseline and see where you are at follow-up. And if we can see this data working, it gets on our website, our rescueelders.org website, so you know what's working in the real world. And we are an independent group. We don't have any financial interest in any of this. We simply are trying to let you live longer. So the last component of this age management profile, again, organ function. Very important. A lot of you, by the way, are suffering from some progressive kidney failure. And some of these therapies may reverse that. So we want to see that. Now, here's the problem. These kind of tests can be very expensive. Quest Labs, if you do all those tests that I mentioned, $4,000. $4,000. We've been able to use our bulk purchasing ability to get the test down to $695. It's still a lot of money. It's still a lot of money. Now, a lot of you or some of you have great health insurance. And if you get your doctor to prescribe these tests, your insurance company may pay for all or part of those tests. So if you go to the proper doctor who prescribes these, and we list these on our website, so you can just print out a sheet and say, doctor, will you please just write a prescription for these and, and let me go to the blood test lab, you might be able to get these tests done for free which means you have more money to spend on your interventions. So we are making this publicly available. There's nothing secret about what we're doing, but the bottom line is the tragedy of lost data. And one quick anecdote, one of our supporters ran down to Dr. Weirden's clinic. He got therapy. He calls me up, sends me his blood results, and is asking me, well, how am I doing, Bill? I said, well, where are your baselines? He didn't have them. We lost that data forever. We don't know how well his aging process may have been reversed. He didn't do the baseline testing. It's absolutely imperative that this be done. And again, JAMA has given me a real nice opening because they've just endorsed one of the first therapies that I'm going to talk about today. This is absolutely incredible. JAMA uh, has basically said that synolytic drugs may transform medicine. It may become standard medical practice. Now, synolytics are compounds that selectively remove senescent cells. And we want to get rid of these cells because they will impede organ function. They emit chronic inflammatory signals. And what a lot of people don't know is they're highly metabolically active. They're, they're, they're basically zombie cells, but they're spewing out 
protein-degrading enzymes. Just think about this. You've got a senescent cell amongst a bunch of healthy cells, and that senescent cell is spewing out metalloproteinases. Those are protein-degrading enzymes, and they're killing your healthy cells or causing your healthy cells to turn senescent. This is a critical component of an age reversal program. We've got to get rid of the senescent cells. And if you look at a study published in 2015 that ignited a firestorm of interest, you look at those benefits that the animals got in response to two available senolytic compounds, and they have to be used together. Dacitinab, I got a leukemia drug, and I'm going to tell you why, don't worry about it. You're only going to take two doses a year. Leukemia drug, dacitinab, and dietary supplement quercetin. You can get that anywhere. So two available compounds can perhaps give you those kind of benefits. And CNN, right after RADFEST, they published a study and, and aired it that these senolytic compounds may start being tested in people. Well, they were a little bit optimistic because the conventional guys haven't done it yet. I've got a big surprise for you in just a few slides to let you know what we've been doing because we don't ignore the science. And as it relates to the government, they're actually putting money into senolytic research because they realize if they can remove accumulated senescent cells in older people, well, they're going to save Medicare a heck of a lot of money. And the media has been reporting on these zombie cells. We all harbor them. These are senescent cells that damage our healthy tissues, ignite chronic inflammation. We need to get rid of these senescent cells. And pretty much everybody agrees we're on the right track. This is something that has to get done. And if we don't do something about it, a lot of the other age reversal therapies that we're trying to incorporate in our bodies, they may not work because you get some fresh young stem cells put in your body and you've got these senescent cells spewing out protein degrading enzymes and creating a chronic inflammatory problem in your body, well, those stem cells are not going to give you the benefit that you'd like to see. But first, before you undergo any stem cell therapy, get rid of those senescent cells. It's probably gonna make it work better. And there are a number of different compounds being investigated right now. But what we know already is dacitinab and coercetin work in the animal model. And I'm going to give you a piece of news very soon as to as it relates to companies that are doing the work on the research. Uh, but what, what's happening is we're seeing real world results in self-experimenting people. Now, Unity raised a bunch of money. They're going to be doing senolytic research. This is fantastic. But look at that time frame. They're looking at 12 months to start the study, multiple years to oversee people doing this and doing all the measurements, and then waiting for FDA approval. We don't have time to wait. So we appreciate Unity doing what they're doing. We love it. But it's not fast enough for us. So the impact of senescent cells is underappreciated. This study came out just two months ago, and again caused me to amend my presentation. I wasn't going to say, present this, but it's just too compelling. They took a few senescent cells and implanted them into healthy young mice. And guess what happened? Well, the, uh, the mice started to accelerate their aging process. They started showing the decline that occurs with aging, normal aging. And then when they transplanted these senescent cells into old mice, well, the old mice also suffered accelerated physical decline, and they died sooner. But here's the great news. Here's the great news. They took old mice who had natural accumulations of senescent cells, and they took the poor group of old mice who were, had senescent cells transplanted into their body, and they gave them dacitinab and quercetin, and they were able to reverse physical declines, and maybe more important, they were able to extend post-treatment survival by 36%. We don't have a lot of technologies out there that can make you live 36% longer if you're already an older person. We just don't have that. So we've got hardcore data that dacitinab and coercetin can have remarkable, remarkable effects. So we've got the data to substantiate the use of senolytic compounds in people today. It's absolutely critical that we take advantage of this. This article in Time Magazine brought out an interesting fact. And these interesting facts I'd like to highlight. And that is, if you have just one senescent cell in your tissues, surrounded by seven to 15,000 healthy cells. That one senescent cell acts like a zombie, spews out the protein-degrading enzymes, and it infects the other cells. It either kills them or damages them so that they become senescent, and the whole process of aging is accelerated. This is earth-shattering news. And then the LA Times, reporting on the same study, 
they reported that the older animals were the human equivalent of 75 to 90 years old. Now that's great news because sometimes they'll treat mice that aren't quite old and they get a nice benefit. But hey, we're old. I hate to say it, I'm going to turn 64 real soon, and I don't have the time to wait, which is why I'm a proponent of people initiating these therapies fast. But to think that they were able to reverse aging, extend post-treatment survival by 36% in mice that were the human equivalent of 75 to 90, that is a major breakthrough. Now, here's what the experts are telling you right now. This is the Journal of the American Medical Association four days ago publishes a report on the potential of synolytics to revolutionize medical practice, to transform how elderly people are treated. And they're telling you to wait. They're saying, wait for more studies to be done because we don't know if there are toxic side effects. Now, so the world found out four days ago about synolytics and the fact that they're toxic, you want to get them out of your body. But what nobody else knows about, except the people in this room, because I'm going to tell you right now is, we've already done the research. We didn't wait. We jumped on this. And as a result, we already know that dacitinib and coercetin, based on every measure we could look at, is not toxic and incredibly beneficial to people with severe osteoarthritis. Many of these patients had bone-on-bone -bone osteoarthritis. No cartilage left whatsoever. We gave them just two doses of the dacitinib and coercetin and 90% had significant, if not complete, relief from pain, improved joint mobility, and six months later, they wanted to do it again, because six months later, more senescent cells accumulated, and they wanted to get rid of them. Now, Life Extension paid for some MRI tests to be done baseline, and we're gonna get the follow-up results in December 2018. We wanna see if there was not significant cartilage regeneration in the joints of these severe osteoarthritic patients. A lot of people don't believe you can do that, but I'm going to show you a way that it probably can be done, and it is being done. Again, the results of our study uh, show that we can make something go away as severe as osteoarthritis without any cartilage whatsoever in your joints. Okay, this is the synolytic dose protocol. Now, most of you have the age reversal update that was handed to you at your registration, but if you lost it, that's okay, because I printed up two copies for everyone here. And I spent the last 13 months nonstop working on practical approaches to reverse aging. Uh, so this is the protocol. It's based on your weight, based on your weight. We are making progress. We are winning this battle. And a lot of people just don't understand that. Now, pricing is a big problem. Um, if you buy the dacitinib, like a cancer drug, it's going to cost you over $2,000, rip-off price. But we've been talking to compounding pharmacies, and we should have a listing of them. They believe they can make the two-dose uh, protocol for under $200. For under $200, once a year, that's all you need to spend, instead of what would be uh, $2,200 if you use the FDA-approved version. So if you wonder, I appreciate your applause. I'm just trying to make sure I get my talk in here. If you wonder, how does removing senescent cells regenerate cartilage? Well, as you've learned, senescent cells spew out protein-degrading enzymes. What does that mean? Well, you're never going to rege regenerate your cartilage if you don't get rid of those protein-damaging senescent cells. So you do that, the macrophages will clear them out in about a week, and then you've got the ability to have your chondrocytes rebuild cartilage. Cartilage regeneration is going to become a reality. And an even more effective way, we believe, is to use NAD plus infusions, plus senolytic therapy, and that should give you an even greater rebuilding of your joint cartilage. The sirtuin-6 is expressed in response to resveratrol and increasing levels of NAD plus. So get rid of the senescent cells, replace your NAD plus down to a level where you're young, and you may see a virtual miracle occur as a result to your osteoarthritis. But by the way, I want everyone to know if you engage in these studies, you need to register on a rescue elder site. We need to know how well it's working. It'll be an absolute disaster if we don't validate and catalog and evaluate the results. Now, NAD is something we've been talking about for a long time. 2001, we at Life Extension made an NAD plus lozenge. The problem was it took an hour to dissolve in your mouth. It tasted like gasoline, and it was too expensive, way too expensive. 
So we developed it, couldn't do anything with it. But we knew how important NAD was. And thank goodness, some people at a company called Chromadex, they were able to acquire the rights to something called nicotinamide riboside that has been proven in numerous studies to increase your NAD plus levels. So this is a tremendous advance. So we launched the nicotinamide riboside in 2014, and I think almost everyone here understands the importance of that and is taking it in one way or another. And Time Magazine earlier this year reported that nicotinamide riboside is reversing aging in older animals, or at least NAD restoration. There's a couple ways to do it. But you're seeing old animals behave younger and look younger in response to NAD replacement therapy. So we have a potential fountain of youth, according to one Harvard professor, and that second quote is even more important because what this individual believes is when our NAD levels drop to zero, we die. It's that simple. And I'm going to show you some slides to indicate how close we are to having that happen. But here's another study showing when you replenish NAD and use some resveratrol, you reverse vascular aging. That's a major, major problem with the, the aging process. Now, we're seeing conventional medicine merge with so-called alternative rather quickly. The American Heart Association is investigating the use of NAD restoration to treat congestive heart failure. Now, it used to take decades for the mainstream to pick up on what we did, but they're now picking up on it in a few years. So this is a real major advance. You're seeing mainstream people, American Heart Association, J Association JAMA, you're seeing them doing some pretty impressive work. So the importance of NAD plus is multifactorial, but we should understand our DNA strands break every single day. And we have repair enzymes that enable those DNA, DNA strands to be put back in order. When our NAD levels get to such a low level that it can't sustain life, there's no further DNA repair. If we don't repair our DNA, we die. It's really that simple. So that's one of the reasons why NAD is so essential. Now, last year we published in our magazine how much NAD levels drop in response to aging. If you're age 50, you only have about 60% of what you had before. And then uh, by age 80, you may be down 98%. You may only have 1% to 2% of the NAD you had when you were young. And by the way, at age 80, that's about the time when most people check out. And we don't want, we don't want to do that. So we want to maintain youthful levels of NAD. This chart is for the first time being presented to a group of people. Uh, some of it was published in Aubrey Gray's Rejuvenation Research just a couple weeks ago, but it reveals how NAD levels progressively decline as we grow older. But it's not just limited to aging. Younger people with pathological conditions will burn up their NAD very quickly. And unhealthy older people between 72 and 80, they can have NAD levels below one nanogram per microliter. That is a very low, dangerous level, because if it's below one, they're going to drop to zero pretty fast. And typically, unhealthy people between the ages of 72 and 80, guess what? They, they don't survive that long. So we need to boost those, and there's a number of ways to do it. This data, some of it's published, some of it is not yet published. You know it right now. And ways that you can accelerate your NAD decline, by the way, is physical and mental stress. Understand that. Put yourself under a lot of stress, you are reducing your NAD. That is not good. And then we've got the issue of uh, ethanol. Uh, too much alcohol is going to burn up your NAD. So we need to make sure we do something. I'll talk more about this on Sunday, how to restore your NAD in a scientific manner. And the impact of an NAD deficit is analogous to aging. You start losing your NAD, you get old and you feel old. Now the next slide I'm going to release is from a not yet published document. I'm only releasing it to this group. It'll come out in a publication soon. But this was the impact of us doing aggressive NAD restoration on a group of metabolic syndrome individuals who had multi, multiple diseases and they're about average age of 79. These are the findings from NAD infusion studies and we actually repeated this study just to make sure the findings were real. Because they were so good with the first group of people, we said, this may not be true. We, we can't get all of those benefits with just one intervention. And guess what? We repeated the study and we did. We were able to get similar results. We're basically reversing aging using NAD infusions and then follow up with a nicotinamide riboside supplement to keep your NAD level high. Very, very important. These are ways to restore NAD. This is in your manual, so I'm not going to leave that up here much, too much longer because you already have it in writing. 
The bottom line is we are running out of time. I'm going to turn 64 sooner than I'd like. I mean, real soon. And that is a big concern to me because it means I have less than 20 years to achieve my objective of gaining total control over aging. But a lot of you have less time. And as a result, you need to be even more aggressive than I am in dealing with aging so that you can be around and to benefit. Now, Jeff Bezos, we love people who write these kind of checks. We love it. But he's only 54, and this is just one of his many projects. He does not have the sense of urgency that I or most of you have. He's hoping it works, but it's not his number one priority. It certainly is my number one priority, which is why this group is so important. So this is our ultimate objective. If we can raise sufficient money, we will test every single one of these therapies in different groups of people and see what is the absolute rational order that we should use them in. And if we can raise money, this kind of research occurs. We don't want to wait until we get in this position to say, maybe I'll write you a check. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. We need to move the technology forward because Dr. George Church may cure aging by year 2030. And if he doesn't do it, frankly, guess what? Guess what? Other people are using CRISPR-Cas9 technology too. They're using CRISPR technology to take our old somatic cells and turn them into induced pluripotent stem cells, which then produce healthy functional cells. So there's others doing the research. There is no upper limit to how long people can live. This is a study published in Nature in 2017, published just last year. So they called me the forever man in popular science. <laughs> and, and, and what was impressive about this is they merged my philosophy and scientific background on, on biological age control with some of the top scientists in the world. And there was a concurrence. Age reversal will occur. It's going to happen. But we need to make it happen faster. That's the real bottom line. Again, putting the pieces together. That's all we need to do to give us that extra 12 years, get us to your 2030, and from then on out, I think it's going to be easy. So this is our sequential order of age reversal interventions. It's outlined in the booklets that you were given when you registered, and if you lose it, it's okay. I printed a second copy for you. And again, we make it to the year 2030, aging becomes controlled, and then we make it to 2050. That's what Ray Kurzweil will talk about here. So what we're looking at are an increasing number of people who are recognizing the fact that aging, disease, and death will be rendered obsolete in a relatively short period of time. If we can make it to the year 2050, this individual who was interviewed in Fox News said, hey, you've got it made. You're not going to have to worry about dying anymore. And companies are being set up now to do mind uploading. Again, this is a Ray Kurzweil subject. And what I've done in the last year is put together a new name for our public benefit group. And what distinguishes us from other groups is we don't have any financial bias. We have no commercial interest. All we're doing is disseminating information that's accurate, that is based on what works, what reports we get back from our membership. Now, in order to accelerate this research, we need money. So we also set up a new charity. Uh, a lot of people said, we don't really want to invest. We just want to contribute. The Human Age Reversal Project Brand new C3 charity, get a tax deduction. So if you want to donate to this charity, the only mission is to accelerate human age reversal research. It will not fund animal research. We're tired of those lab animals getting all the benefit. And again, our private association, which is what I spend 60% of my time on nowadays, the other 40% life extension, we don't have financial bias. Our objective is to get you accurate information. So what you need to do is register for updates on our rescue Elders website. It's rescueelders.org. And now I'm going to have to go backwards here or have some help here, or I'll just say it if I need to. Rescueelders.org. It is listed in your booklet. You've got a manual for age reversal interventions. We list a sequential order. And Sunday, I'm going to get into those in detail. So that concludes my conversation. Thank you.